Alright, welcome back everyone. This is GSTAR321 here again. Back with more Resident Evil Code Veronica HD on the Xbox 360. This is the start of the Antarctic base with Claire. Oh. oh. Hey, wake up, Steve. Oh. Oh. We're still alive. Thanks. Oh, uh, <coughs> plane's trashed. Well, let's split up and find another way off this oversized freezer. Right. Okay, let's do it. All right, so here we go. This is the start of the Antarctic base with Claire. This is going to conclude the walkthrough videos for Claire's playthrough. Okay, this will be the fifth out of fifth video once we've completed this we take control of Chris Redfield and play through his campaign, okay? So, this is actually quite a short area, if you know exactly what you're doing. This area can be completed in, I'd say, under 25, under 20 minutes, if you skip all the cutscenes. There are quite a lot of cutscenes in this uh, Antarctic base area, and pretty much when I finish these walkthrough videos, I think I'm going to be very confident in completing the rocket launcher run because you know I'd say that the cutscenes are taken up hours and hours of time and by skipping them you're gonna save yourself a shitload of time right? there's just a case there in that little cage room with that zombie uh, we do not have access to it with Claire on her playthrough okay we actually come back here later as Chris Redfield on his campaign sorry on his campaign and we get access to it then, okay? The zombie breaks out of the door there at some point. We can go in, grab the case, and there's some shotgun shells in there as well. Now, Chris Redfield does not have the lockpick, so we can't actually open the case with him. We do get to control Claire during his campaign, much later in his campaign, for a very short period of time. During that short period of time with Claire, you uh, you know, go to the stash, have a look for any cases that Chris has picked up, and unlock them for him, okay? So that's what I'll be doing. And I will actually be finally getting the Magnum with Chris Redfield, okay, on his campaign, which is what I failed to do when I did a playthrough of this game just before, okay? So I'm going to be pretty happy about that as well. Um, the Magnum is a devastating weapon. Okay, it is very powerful. When I play through, when I played through Chris's campaign prior to doing these walkthrough videos, I noticed that you don't get a whole lot of ammo for it, which is disappointing. But you know, it is very, very strong, and I'm going to be saving it for the boss fights only. Okay, I'm not going to be using it on regular zombies. It is just a waste. All right. Yeah, there's a zombie there, okay. It's going to trigger, when we walk over to that zombie, it's going to trigger a few a few of them to spawn, okay. So we'll get attacked by about three or four of these guys. No stress, it's easy as, okay. Very weak zombies. Here we go. And that semi-auto or auto handgun, whatever I've got, multiple fire handgun is really good, okay. I think you can set it on to auto, like when you, if you go into the inventory and check your handgun, you'll see that there's like an auto and manual setting. I've, I've never actually toyed around with it, to be honest, because, you know, this game isn't that difficult for me, you know, I don't 
need to... I don't know. I don't know why I haven't bothered tinkering around with it because, you know, like I said, I haven't really been any under any stress and it's never actually even occurred to me to do it, you know. I think I noticed it once and then I was like, oh yeah, that's cool, and then I forgot about it as soon as I closed my inventory screen. So, I don't know what that does, but uh, give it a go, you know. I'd say auto and manual, you know, you just hold the X button to fire without having to keep pressing it, you know, like a semi-auto rifle, but I don't know, can't confirm that. Alright, when we go down here, there's going to be these flying bugs and shit, okay? They spit poison on you. Just have an examine of these things here. Big nests, okay? Creepy shit. Uh, I won't show you it yet, I'll just run in here first. This is actually a save point, and stash is here, okay? And there's a few items in here as well. You actually get a lot of herbs in the Antarctic base, okay? I'm talking a shitload of herbs. Pretty much every room that I go into is going to have one to two herbs, alright? It is crazy. And I think it is needed because if you're planning on doing the weapon launcher run, you know, you cannot use the first aid spray. It is uh, forbidden. If you use it, you're fucked, okay? You will not get an A rank on the game. So, herbs are all you can use to heal yourself, alright? Now, you're obviously going to get hit, you know what I mean? So, you're, you are going to have to use healing items. You can't, you cannot complete this game without using a single healing item. That is just fucking insane, alright? Uh, no one can do that. So, herbs are what you'll be using, you know, you'll be combining green and greens, green and reds, and all that sort of stuff, okay? And, I think that's why you get a lot of the herbs at the start of, you know, here in the Antarctic base, because when you, if you watch the previous video, you know, we fought the tyrant on the plane, and I'd say I used about four first aid sprays on that fight, okay? Or, you know, if you were doing the weapon, or sorry, if you were doing the rocket launcher run, you would have used four combined herbs, okay? So you'd be completely out of healing items by the time you come to this base, you know what I mean? So... It's really good that they've put in all these herbs here for you, okay? Blue herbs uh, cure poison. You'll notice I've got a couple of them in here. Now, to be honest, I rarely ever use the blue herbs, okay? I don't get poison that much. Uh, hang on, I'll just talk more about it in a minute. Push this uh, thing here, go over here. It's a little rat that jumps out. There's just memos. There's memos and shit everywhere in this room, okay? You'll notice I've just been looking at heaps of them. Another one here, butler's letter. Yep. Okay, exit that. Now, there's actually a button here. Alright, switch. If you push it, nothing happens because we have not turned on the electricity yet. Alright. So, we need to go and actually do that first. I just wanted to show you what that did there. Um, so, yeah, as I was talking about, blue herbs... I rarely ever use them. Now, just have a look at this. These little bugs there, they fly around here and they spit acid at you. As you can see, there's actually a blue herb planter right there, alright? Which means that is an unlimited blue herb, okay? Every time you run over to it, if you're poisoned and press X, you can use it and you'll be free of poison, alright? So, you know, I believe that is. I believe that it is completely unnecessary to carry a blue herb around. Uh, you know, there's never been a time when I've played this, especially on Claire's playthrough, that I've uh, felt that I've needed to have a blue herb, you know. there I think there were a couple of times on Chris Redfield's campaign, although they were very rare, where I actually did need to use a blue herb, you know. Um... I think that if you use a blue herb, uh, sorry, if you are poisoned, you'll be you'll be losing damage over time. Okay, so you'll be getting into the red court, sorry, the or dark orange caution state a lot quicker, and then straight into danger. Okay, you can tell when you're into the danger state by limping very, very severely. Okay, and walking incredibly slow. You can sort of liken it to the Left for Dead. 
uh, state when you're on one health, okay, you're walking very, very slow and you're like dragging one knee in front of the other, in front of the other type thing, okay. But for this Antarctic base uh, area with Claire, don't even bother carrying blue herbs in your inventory. Completely unnecessary, alright? Don't do it. And I think the reason in Chris Redfield's campaign it might be actually handy to carry one when you get to this Antarctic base is because you do encounter different enemies with Chris on his campaign. Uh, hunters, they're called. And there are actually... They're very, very fast. They're powerful. Okay, they take a bit of a beating to take down. And certain hunters can, when they swipe you, they can actually inflict poison damage onto you. Okay, which can be fucking annoying. So it might be handy just to have one blue herb, whatever. But you know, like I said, I've never felt that I've needed to actually have one on me. Okay, kill these zombies in this area here. Alright, now there's actually a safe here, alright, it's locked by an explosive, we need the detonator, turn around, pick up the detonator, alright, just put it straight on here, use the detonator on it, okay, um, there it is, it's a heat sensitive detonator, okay, so there you go, it keeps saying heat sensitive, so when heat applies to this room or this, you know, that lock, it'll uh, open, don't sh don't go ahead and shoot an explosive bow tip arrow at it like I did. Okay, it doesn't do anything. Um, open that up. You get the AK. This is really important. Okay, to grab this AK-47 rifle here. This is at the end of uh, this Antarctic base area. We fight the boss called the Nameless Ma Man. I think it's called or Nosferatu. Actually, that's uh, yeah, that's what he's called. And uh, that is what I use to take him down. Okay. I do not use that weapon at all while I'm playing through this area with Claire. I save it for that final battle against the Nameless Man. And it's a really cool enemy. Okay, I really like it. Um, it sort of reminds me of a little bit of the Garadors in Resident Evil 4. Um, ooh, there's spiders here. Okay, These things take an absolute beating. There's two of them. Uh, they spit poison, they grab you, and they fucking inject venom. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch straight out to the explosive bow tip arrows. Aim straight down to the floor. They take about three or four. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm just firing like crazy. There we go. And I'm fucking poisoned, which is just great. Okay. That's fucking fantastic. So, I think there might be a blue herb in this area, actually. I might get lucky. There's blue herbs everywhere, you know, there's herbs in every room, so. There's actually a spider underneath the grating that I'm walking on, okay? Don't worry about it, you can't kill it. Um, it, bas it doesn't really do anything except occasionally spit acid up, alright? It misses you 99.9% .9 of the time, even if you're standing still. So, don't worry about that spider there, okay? If you get hit by it, I'd be very surprised, alright? And, oh yes, there's a blue herb. Beautiful. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and use that because I need to pick up an item right here. There's a barcode there. So, I'm going to use that. Cure myself for the poison. Let's do it. There we go. Fine. Okay. And pick up this barcode here, which is what I need. Got a full inventory, which is not good. There goes that spit from that spider. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's not going to hit you. There was actually a gas mask in there, alright, which I had a look at when I first entered this room. We uh, come back through here and get that later. Um, I'm just going to uh, use the mining room key here just so I can discard that. Um, I might go ahead and put this barcode sticker straight onto the box before I head into this room. Alright, it's all about conserving your inventory space in this uh, game so that you don't have to keep running back to and from a stash. So the uh, sticker goes on this thing here. Alright, now we do not have electricity power yet so we can't turn the conveyor belt and uh, push it through there. So we have to go in this mining room area and turn on the electricity in here. Okay. Alright, now 
Now up here, there's nothing here except a socket to put a valve in. Okay, I'll just examine it here. It's an octagon hole, octagon shaped uh, hole. Okay. Basically, later on in the campaign, this area and most other areas are going to be filled with poison gas. All right, and to shut off the poison gas, we need to uh, put a valve ha handle in there, an octa-shaped valve handle. So this area is actually where we turn the electricity on. There's going to be a few dogs in here. All right, I know exactly where they all are. So you're just going to see me running straight up to them, taking care of them. All right. Just take note of where they are. Bang, bang, bang. Alright, he's dead. Pretty easy when they're not uh, running around. Another one right here. Alright, so three dogs in this area. Take note of uh, the locations that I just shot them in. Because uh, when you run up to them, you know, you've got a few seconds. They're sort of resting. And that'll buy you a few seconds just to get your aim on them. Take a few shots and uh, just pretty much kill them straight off the bat. Okay. As opposed to, you know, if you were oblivious to their whereabouts and you ran past them, for example, they'd get up, they'd be running around, okay, you, you won't know where they're coming from, they'll jump at you, bite you, whatever, you'll get angry, you'll, uh, and you'll just go fucking crazy, probably with the AK-47 on them, okay? Don't use the AK-47 on them, it is unnecessary, alright? Save it for the final boss fight in this chapter. Just picked up a shitload of green herbs there, okay? There's actually two more in this area, which is insane. Okay, it is fucking awesome. Um, turn on the electricity first before I go ahead and get that. I've turned on the generator. Turn on the electricity here. Alright, power is being supplied. Beautiful. And there's actually two more herbs here, okay? So go ahead and grab that. Green one, I'll have to combine it to pick up the other one. I'm running out of space here. Pick up the other one. Alright. So like I said, you're going to be running very, very low on herbs and uh, first aid sprays when you enter the Antarctic base with Flare, especially if you're doing the rocket launcher run, okay, because you won't be allowed to use first aid sprays. So you're probably going to have zero, absolutely no healing items by the time you come here with Claire, alright? So the game is really good for uh, doing this, you know, putting uh, herbs everywhere for you. It's really, really good, okay? Alright, so we need to turn on the power here first, just switch this on here. That'll uh, start the conveyor belt going. Alright, and we'll just flip the switch here. And if you remember, we put the barcode on that box there, okay? Now, what that's going to do is, well, what I believe it actually does is, it goes into the room. Um, I'll run in there at some point. It goes into one of the rooms, and uh, it either leaks the gas that's inside it or causes a fire. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the room. Let's just go and have a look. Yep, okay. So I think what it's done is it's gone in here and something's happened. It's caused a fire. All right, we cannot go through there. Now have a look at this. There's the magnum, okay? Magnum can be seen. The fire is preventing me from going there. Now, don't worry about it just yet. You can't get it with Claire, all right? We actually come back through here with Chris Redfield and we use the fire extinguisher on the fire. Now you're probably wondering, why can't I, I've got the fire extinguisher now in my stash, why can't I just go get it and use it? Because there is no fire extinguish in it, okay? Uh, just grab this gas mask here. There is actually no fire extinguish in the fire extinguisher, okay? It is empty and there is nowhere to refill it, correct? But when we play here, come back through here as Chris Redfield, there is actually an area that we can uh, refill the fire extinguisher, okay? And then uh, go ahead and spray the fire out. So I think that's basically what it does there, you know, by turning the conveyor belt and uh, putting that sticker on the box, whatever, it just causes um, a fire hazard in there. And it, if you remember, we put that detonator on that safe in there, and it said, uh, you know, heat sensitive uh, detonator. So. 
you know, I believe that when I go back in that room, that safe will be open as well, you know, because there's fire all throughout that whole area. And I'm not actually sure what is in that safe, because, you know, like I said on my previous playthrough, uh, I did not bring the fire extinguisher with me, so I did not have access to going back into that room. So it's going to be uh, pretty neat to see what's in there. Hopefully it's some magnum ammo. That would be really nice. Then I can just go ahead and use it on the um, final boss with Chris Redfield. Alright, so this is cool. This is the Nameless Man or Nosferatu. Okay. Um, this is really good. Have a look at this. So, that is a really fucking creepy thing. Um, I can't remember 100% story-wise who he is. I believe it's um, Alfred's father or Grant. I can't remember. But if you read all the memos and shit, you know... Um, actually, hang on before I... Uh, just turn that pot plant over. You'll notice I examined it. There's actually a key on there. Okay, that's very important. He's got a really fucking creepy wail as well, you know. The first time I played this, I was I was scared shitless when I was running around and hearing that scream. Um, yeah, so if you're, um, you know, reading all the memos and shit and uh, paying attention to the story 100%, you know, like I did on my first playthrough, uh, the story behind him, you know, like I said, I can't remember exactly, but it's either Alfred's father or someone in his uh, gene pool or whatever, family tree, so to speak. But uh, it's really, really cool if you pay attention and read it, okay? Grab the gas mask there, okay? We've got a gas leak, so it's open the thing for us. And, yep, so that thing's broken and it's leaking gas, so... By doing that, see, I'm not sure if by putting the stick barcode sticker on the box, it either did that to this room, or it caused the fire in the other room, okay? I'm not 100% sure. Probably did both, alright? But, um, yeah, basically, by uh, causing the poison gas to leak out there, it uh, gives us access to grab that gas mask, which is what we need, okay? And I'm getting fucking poisoned like crazy here by these flying bugs and shit. I don't even know if you can kill them, alright? Um, I think you can, however they just keep respawning from memory. I'm not 100% sure, I have not tested it. But you know, they hardly do any damage to you, it's not really a big deal. I just run straight past them, okay? There's a blue herb planter there. In case you get poisoned, just run straight over to that and heal. Cure yourself of the poison, yeah, it's not a big deal at all. So we're going in the machine room here. This is actually where we find the valve. Okay, so just run straight over here. Claire, with a cutscene. It looks like there's an Australian observation base about seven miles away from here. That should be our target. Great news! And take a look at that. It's a digging vehicle. If we break the wall with it, we might have a chance. Okay, let's do it. My fault. Don't say that. Listen to me. We'll escape from here. Together. Come on. We've got to shut off the gas. If we split up, we'll have a better chance of stopping it. <sighs> okay. 
Steve! Don't forget. We'll get out of here. Together. Oh boy, so Steve's uh, caused a gas leak, okay? We just run straight back in there with our gas mask. So the first time I played through this, you know, I saw that... You know, it's understandable. Steve's developing a thing for Claire, whatever. He's checking her out and then, you know, he's not paying attention and causes a gas leak, whatever. I just laughed, you know, it's pretty funny. So in here is actually the valve handle that we need to collect, alright, to shut off the poison uh, gas. If you remember, I showed you that uh, octagon hole where we needed to put the valve in. Now, the valve I just picked up, it is not an octagon shaped valve, it is a square uh, valve, okay? Now, what we need to do is take it into that room. If you remember, there was that room with the zombie standing in that sort of gated area with the case and shotgun shells just over here. All right, in that room was actually a metal cutter machine. So we need to go ahead in here, place the square valve handle on the uh, machine, and I'll show you the how white it's square. Uh, valve handle, as you can see, it's a square shape, alright? So I'm going to go ahead and use it right now in this machine. And this machine is actually going to just automatically shape it into an octagonal valve handle for us, okay? Which is really cool. Took me a while the first time I played this to actually figure it out because I completely forgot about this machine, you know? And there we go, octa valve handle. Success, okay? There's that zombie there going crazy. You can't shoot him, alright? Don't bother trying to shoot bullets at him. We come back there with Chris and take care of him. So as you can see, there's some more zombies that have just spawned down below, alright? And all we need to do now is run to the valve hollow, put the valve in, shut the gas off. And basically, after that, we encounter Alfred for a little bit. We get a cutscene, and this is it pretty much for the Antarctic base area, okay? So it's very short, very, very simple, if you know what you're doing. Um, if you're doing the rocket launcher run, skip all the cutscenes, you know, this area will probably take you 15, 20 minutes at max, okay? Possibly even less, depending on how crazy you go, alright? So I'm just going to possibly grab another healing item, just in case, because... Straight after I've turned the valve to shut the poison off, um, we're going to be fighting that nameless man or Nosferatu. Okay, that blind guy that was trapped down in the uh, basement area before, locked up in like a strafe jacket, whatever. Okay, so yeah, that nameless man or Nosferatu, that enemy, um, he sort of reminds me of Resident Evil 4's Garador. Okay, if you've played that. And, uh, you know, I've done a walkthrough commentary videos for that on my YouTube channel as well. You can watch that. Basically, the Garador in Resident Evil 4 is blind as well, okay? And it wails like that. It's got fucked up eyes, okay? It's, its eyes are sewn shut or some shit. Just reminded me of uh, this enemy, Code Veronica, okay? But I think uh, this one in Code Veronica is a lot cooler. Just because of, uh, in terms of story, who he actually is, you know, and what role he plays. It's cool. So just going crazy here with the handgun, killing all these zombies. Don't really need to, you know. I think it's probably just a waste of ammo, but I don't feel like getting grabbed, you know. And I've got a plentiful supply of handgun ammo anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so I'll run straight back in here. It's filled with gas. Equip Make sure you're carrying the gas marks around, you know, all this time. Otherwise, you're going to have to run back to your stash, grab the gas mask out come back, you know, and you're wasting, like, minutes and minutes of time there. There's that big machine there. Alright, we just put it in here and shut it off. And I believe we'll get a cutscene now. <sighs> We're safe now. Think again, Claire. I shall enjoy watching you shriek in agony. Not this time! You 
So that dude has broken free, and we're actually going to have to fight him now. Before you go back to Steve, okay, grab this uh, rifle here, alright? It contains seven bullets in it. Claire, what are you doing? Let's go! Are you ready? I'm going to bust through that wall. Go for it! Right! Claire! Maybe we can escape through there! Come on, let's go! Come on! Finally, we can get out of this insane place! Okay, let's go! Come on, let's go! What, are you scared? So, we've got to take care of this guy now, alright? Now, I've kept my AK-47, that is going to be doing the main, most damage to him, alright? But for now, all I do is uh, shoot him a few times with this sniper rifle. I, I'm not really good at shooting him with this, okay? I don't even know if you can zoom in with it. So it's pretty awkward actually, shooting with this weapon. You know, and you've only got 7 shots. I think this is actually the whole, the only time in the whole game you can actually use this weapon, alright? So you just gotta shoot him on the chest there where that big red fucking shit is coming out, whatever. Alright, I think I'm out of uh, ammo for it, so I'm just gonna switch to the AK-47 here. So just keep a distance, hold, you know, equip it and just spray like crazy. You'll know you're hitting him when all this poison shit just is spraying out. You know, you can hear the noise. Um, I, when I, uh, usually this takes him down, okay, uh, the whole clip of the AK-47 and he goes down. You might need to shoot him a couple of times after that with the handgun, uh, depending on if you've missed shooting with the sniper rifle a little bit, okay. But, you know, if you, uh, hit him a few times with the sniper rifle at least, that's going to, uh, 
take his damage down quite a bit, so you won't need to... You probably won't even need to use the whole AK-47 to take him down, alright? So you just got to keep running around, okay, getting distance on him because that fucking poison is very frustrating, alright? He's actually very easy. He's not hard to defeat at all. If I had the, uh, I'm poison there, that's not good. If I had the grenade, fucking hell, I'm getting fucked up here. Probably would be a good idea just to use the grenade launcher a couple of times on him. You know, maybe shoot a few acid rounds or fire rounds, whatever. Just so you can, uh, just make this go a lot smoother, you know. You won't be getting hit as much as I am here. This is just ridiculous. Alright, so I'm not on danger yet. I'm not limping. Okay, I'm out of AK-47 ammo, and I'm just going to switch to the handgun here. He should go down pretty quickly now. Oh shit, I'm on danger. I'm walking very, very slow. I'm going to heal myself. Alright, so he should go down now pretty soon. There we go, he's dead. Alright, so he's very easy. Are you all right? Claire! You're alive! I'm sorry. I failed you. Don't worry about it. Let's go. I swear I'll protect you next time, Claire. We did it! We're finally out! <laughs> Look! There's a snowmobile over there! Perfect! We'll be able to ride right over to the Australian base with this! Yeah! Let's go! Don't forget about this, Claire. Alright guys, so this is pretty much the end of uh, Claire's playthrough now. We've just completed the Antarctic base. After this cutscene here, the game transitions straight into the action with Chris Redfield. So 
I'm going to leave the video here, okay, and commence uh, Chris Redfield's playthrough in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.